Good evening. This is a day that the Lord has made, and we choose to rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Listen, we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to pray in first. Amen. Let us pray. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come this morning, this evening, and say thank you, God. Thank you for being with us throughout today, God, and protecting us, being a fence all around us, and keeping your hand over our heads. Lord God, we want to thank you for today, a day that we've never seen before, never will see it again. We ask that you let this word tonight go forth as you would have it to go forth. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Listen, for the month of November, we're going to do um, Bible study just a little different, um, except for Thanksgiving. We're going to be going through this book, Seed Times and Harvest. We're going to be going through that. So tonight, uh, it's going to be four of us. Um, I'm going to do like 10 minutes apiece. Did it, everybody have one of these little books? You do not. Uh, there we go. There we go. Anybody else don't have one? We can... We can get somebody to get some books out of the, okay, Deacon Booker is going to get some. Okay. So that's what we're going to be doing for the month of November. We're going to be going through seed time and harvest. Um, the book of Genesis is the laws that God first put out. And it's... Uh, the laws of Genesis, that's where, that's where mine starts at. The laws of Genesis. How many of you know if you don't plant a seed, nothing can grow? If you don't plant a seed, nothing can grow. Think about wheat. If you plant one, one seed of wheat, you can never have bread or biscuit. If you only plant one seed, you can never have bread or biscuit because it takes more than just one strand of seed to have that. So once you plant your seed, you have to continue to plant. You have to continue to water. You have to continue to nourish that seed. If you put a seed in the ground and you don't put water on it, what is it going to do? It's going to die out. Then if you put seed in the ground and you put water on it for this time and this time and then you stop watering it, what is it going to do? It's going to die out. It may start growing, but if, you're gonna, if you don't continue to nourish it and water it, it'll grow a little bit. Then it may wither. And if before it wither, it can come, somebody can come and snatch it out of the ground. That's what happened with us. Seeds, planting seed is, is in the spiritual realm and it's in the natural realm, but it all works together. It all works the same way. That's the thing with us. If, if, if a seed is being planted and, and, and you don't continue to feed or water that seed, that seed just lays there. So this is what God said. He told Moses, I'm sorry, he told Noah. He told Noah at the end of the flood, he made a promise to God. He made a promise to Noah. He said, I will never wipe this earth out again just because of man. That was the reason of the great flood, because of man, what man did. But he made a promise that he would never destroy the world again because of man. He said, because man from birth is sinful, is evil. So, but that's the promise that he made, that he would never do that. But then he came back and he said, he came back. And in Genesis 1 and 11, he said, the first chapter, it says, then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit trees that yields fruit according to its kind 
What is this saying? The fruit tree is going to bear fruit. We are going to bear humans. God put, he, he created us in his image. He planted his seed in us that we will become in his image. It's the same way in the fruit. The fruit is going, the fruit tree is going to bear fruit. He said, let the grass grow. So the thing is, bottom line is, we reap what we sow. We reap what we sow. If we plant good seed, good seed to grow. If we plant bad seed, bad seed is going to grow. But then it says, but you got to look. The world is going to go on. He talks about summer, spring, and fall. Harvest time. Harvest season. Harvest season is different everywhere in the country. Harvest season is different. But it's still harvest season. It's still harvest season. I don't care where we are. It's still harvest season. And with us in the spiritual realm, listen, he said, go out and fill my house. When he said, go out and fill my house, he's not saying bring somebody to church. He's saying, plant that seed down in somebody's gut, in somebody's belly. Plant that seed down in there. Spread the word of God. So when us as Christians, you don't have to be a preacher or a deacon to spread the word of God. God is putting that word down in you. So you take that word, what you have in you, and you spread it, and you put it down in somebody else's gut. Because, listen, the word says when, when God spoke to Noah, he didn't speak it out loud. He spoke it to his heart. He spoke it to his heart. Then he came back and spoke it out loud. So the thing is, when God put it down in you, when he put it in your heart, you speak it out loud. You have to speak, when you speak it out loud, this is, I, I tell people, listen, what you hear goes in the heart. What, what, your, what you see goes in the heart. And what goes in the heart is going to come out. So rather, if somebody is speaking it, I tell my kids all the time, teach your kids and don't let the TV teach them. Because if you sit back and let somebody else teach them that's, that's teaching them not, that's not what of God, that's, that's bad seed being planted. So, so with us in the spiritual realm, continue to tell somebody about the goodness of Jesus. Continue to tell somebody how God have been good to you, where he have brought you from. That's good seed. That's good seed. But when you start doing that, what you don't need to do, don't just stop. Don't just stop. What you reap is what you sow. You know, my wife says all the time, there's good consequences, there's bad consequences. In life, whatever you do, whatever choice you make. So just always remember to continue to plant good seed into something or into somebody. Amen. My time is up. Ten minutes. That's all we got. But I want to say this. Everything produces after its own kind. If you are hootlum and you spread hootlum seeds, hootlum's gonna grow. Amen. If you are a child of God, if you plant that seed of being a child of God, what's gonna happen? Anybody? Every no, everybody. What's gonna happen? My time is up, and I thank you, and I ask you to keep. Spread the word of God. Keep planting good seeds. Amen. Good evening, King Solomon. I'm excited. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. So, yes, we're talking about Seed time and harvest. And uh, 
that was an awesome way to open up, Reverend Leeds. And so what I'm going to do uh, in keeping with my assignment in my section, it says the seed is a necessity. Okay? Keep that in mind. And I got about seven good points for you. Now, first and foremost, we need to understand that sowing and reaping, that's a law. Okay? In this natural world, Genesis 1 and 12 tells us that sowing and reaping is a law. Okay? And like Reverend Leek said, that seed is going to produce after its own kind. And it's going to produce the fruit after its own kind and more seed of its own kind. That's important to grasp. Now, with this law in the natural world, we need to understand it's a law in the spiritual world also. So when we are sowing seed, we have to keep that in mind. God is not mocked. Whatsoever man sows, that he also reaps. So, if you want to be a child of God and you say, okay, I'm going to trick the system. Over here today, I'm a side hustle. I'm going to get with some people and, and we're going to work out some some things, and I'm going to try to come up on this end. And then, when that's over for the evening, I try to come back over here at Bible study and pray and read the word and be in the spirit and, and, and do all those godly things. Well, you're short-circuiting the system. It's the law. You cannot get around it. Okay? So that's very, very important. Now, this next thing I need you to understand about seed time and harvest. This is how God is going to bestow his blessings on you. This is, this is you, you've been wanting access to those blessings. All those things that Christ went to the cross and died for. This is how you do it. We sow seed. See, Paul said, I planted. Apollos, he watered it. Now watch this. But God gives the increase. So once again, no matter how great a green thumb we think we got, at the end of the day, God gives the increase. That's where those blessings come from. Now, Another very, very important point. Sowing and reaping. Seed time and harvest still. And I want you to think about 1 Corinthians 3 and 6. What I just stated. It's going to imply you have to wait. You're going to have to have some patience. You're going to have to utilize your faith. So, Understand that we have to wait. And then the last big thing that I need you to gather from seed time and harvest. You're going to sow, but you're going to reap more than you sow. Okay? So if you sow into your flesh, the word says you will reap corruption. If you sow with the spirit, you will reap the eternal life of heaven. But you can't be over here sowing so to your flesh and you go, well, I just did it that one time. That one time, that one seed, it's going to produce. <laughs> but if you sow with the word of God, you sow with the word of God. It's incorruptible seed. 
and it doesn't matter who's spreading the seed. It doesn't matter how bad they are or how messed up they are or how bad of a friend or what mood they're in. If you utilize the word of God, that's incorruptible seed, and it will purpose and go forth as God intended it to. Amen? That's my time. Good evening. Uh, I probably won't be up here as long as Reverend Leakes or Deacon Booker, but uh, I'm going to do my best here. Um, so my part is uh, acting as God would act. Uh, in this book, it says, you know, you hear people say, you know, um, people who confess God's word say the promises of God are trying to act like God. Well, since he gave us um, dominion, as it is written in Genesis chapter 1 and 26, it says here, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let him have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds and over the air and over the cattle and all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Well, since he gave us, um, since we are made like him, we are to act like him, we are to walk like him, we are to talk like him, we are to live like him. And so, um, also, since um, God is a three-part being, the Father, Son, and the Spirit, and we are spirit, we can um, walk, talk, and act like him and live like him in the spirit, of course. And so, uh, that's, part, that's one part of acting like God would act. Um, we speak his word, and we, I mean, and we, we walk it out, we talk it out, and we live it out. Um, sorry, I got my talking points here. And so um, here we, ha we, do, we have the same power and authority as God. Um, also, um, like when we see something that we don't like or that is not of God, we don't, we don't just say something that's contrary to God's word. We say something the same, the, the same way as God's word. It's like if someone's, you know, sick or they're sick or you know it's not from God. So like Isaiah 55 and 11 said, he was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Um, the chastisement of peace uh, was upon him and with his stripes were healed. So we speak that. We uh, believe that. We walk in that and we live in that. Um, let's see. Uh, Joel 22 and 28 says to declare and decree a thing. We can do the same thing because, again, we are spirit. Uh, just like God. So we have, he's given us that power and authority to speak his word, live his word, uh, speak his word, live his word, and um, let's see, speak, live, and uh, just act like his, we, we, just like the title says, um, act like God would act. And that's my piece. Tear down last night, and then at work, he came by and shoved this book in my face and uh, told me what he needed me to do. Uh, but you know, as, as Christians, as believers, you know, we, we say it all the time we walk by faith and not by sight. And, and in seed sowing, it's a faith walk, yeah, it, it, it's a faith walk because we're, we're, we're doing what the Lord has instructed us to do. So in, in the fourth section, which I have, it says, sow it the way God said it. So uh, immediately, um, I, I, I perceived obedience. Uh, I, I perceived uh, getting out of Patrick's way and, and, and doing it the Lord's way. And one of my favorite passages of scripture from Acts chapter 9, uh, verse number uh, 29, and, and Peter and the other apostles replied, we must obey God rather than men. We have no other choice. And any time that you're, you're expecting a 
harvest or, or blessing or, or you wanting to reap anything of God, um, it, it's going to start with faith and it's going to start with obedience. Because if you're not faithful, if, if you're not trusting, and if you're not obedient to what God said, um, you won't reap. You won't be blessed. You, know, you may be successful uh, in your own eyesight, but if you're not doing it the Lord's way, um, your success won't last long. So uh, one of the stanzas here, it says, so sow it the way God said. Uh, I'm just going to read just a little bit of this. It says, we have been taught that we should tell it like it is. This is not a Bible method. The Bible method is that you say it the way the word of God says it. And so many times as, 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 as believers, sometimes we get caught up in ourselves and we think that this won't be such a bad thing. Uh, I'm, due to, I'm due to pay $100 in tithes and offerings. But I'm, 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 I'm going to shortchange it this week because I, I want to do something here on the other side. Well, uh, to be blessed by God, you, you need to give the whole $100. Uh, you need to do, ex do it the way it, the Lord has laid it out for you to do it. Because here's, here's, the, here's the point that I, that I want to make. Uh, we, we say we walk by faith and not by sight. The scripture tells us that he is a rewarder, a rewarder of them that diligently seek after him. And then the scripture tells us again that it's impossible to please him without faith. All of that centers, or centers around obedience. And sometimes we, we, we are stubborn people because we get something in our head and in our, in our heart and it might necess not necessarily be a spiritual thing or a God-inspired thing. But we, we, we heard that, 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 uh, that baby uh, did this over here and, and he flipped X amount of dollars and he got this. Uh, all the time on Facebook, somebody's messaging me with a cash app scam. You know, you, you put in 200, you get 3,500 back. You know, and, and, and I've known folks that have done that and, and they, they got a little change back, uh, but in the end, they end up losing their money. And, and, and I don't want to make it sound like it's all about money uh, because when you obey God and, and you, when you're wanting to reap a harvest from God, it's more than just finances. It's peace of mind. It's good health. Uh, it's peace in the household. Um, it's peace in the workplace. It's peace in the neighborhood. And, and with all that's going on in Little Rock and everywhere else across this country, we need a harvest of peace. We need a harvest of, 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 of love. We need a harvest of, of restraint. Because nobody, nobody wants to apologize anymore. Nobody... Uh, wants to, to bag down anymore. Everybody wants to step on somebody's toes or, or, or hurt somebody. It, it's the way of thinking. So uh, there's been a lot of bad seeds sown. And honestly, we're, we're reaping some of that chaos from those bad seeds that were sown so many years ago. Amen. If you choose, if your desire rather, or in line with the word of God, then say it the way you want it. Say it the way God said it. When you see lack in, and problems in your life, speak abundance and peace. That's the seed you are sowing. Go to the word of God, find the promise, and plant the seed, and you are seeding, are seeding for a harvest. Romans 8 tells me that I'm more than a conqueror through him that loves me, which is Jesus Christ. Over 20-some-odd years ago, I came here uh, broke, busted, and disgusted. Didn't have a dime. Uh, was a patient at the VA hospital, needing help. Uh, I came here, didn't know it at the time, but I was, I was planting a seed that was going to manifest itself 20 some odd years later down the road. I, I didn't realize it then at the time that if I followed the, the instructions of the, 
of those that were trying to help me that it would bless me 20, 30 years down the road. Didn't understand all of that then. It didn't make any sense then. But over the years, uh, the pieces of the puzzle have been put together. It's all making sense now. So I'm, I'm anxious now to do it the way God wants it done. I'm anxious now to, to come to Bible study. Some years ago, I, Bible study? I had better things to do on a Wednesday night. But when you sow a seed and you do it from the heart, then the scripture says that what comes from the heart will reach the heart. The Lord will bless your efforts. He will bless your trials. He will bless your tribulations. He will, he, 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 he will help you endure the test of time. He will help you stand uh, uh, through the fiery furnace experience and, and, and in the lion den type experiences. He'll bring you through that. But you got to do it his way. Back to my scripture. Peter and the other apostles said that we must obey God. Uh, we don't have an option. We're children of the Most High God. We were saved by grace and mercy. Uh, our Savior saved us by the shedding of his blood. So I'm, I'm, I'm indebted to him. I can never repay that debt, but I surely can serve him. I surely can be obedient to him to the best of my God-given ability. And what does that produce? It produced harvest. Because had you told me some 20-some odd years ago that I would be here at King Solomon on this night uh, uh, being a part of a Bible study instruction, and I'm, I'm, I'm one of the chosen ones to share tonight, I would have told you something. But the grace of God. So I'm going to close with this. Remain faithful. Don't look for the shortcuts as Deacon Booker mentioned. If you have to have the long drawn out way, go the long drawn out way. That's God's way. Because through that process, he's, 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 he's molding you, he's shaping you, he's preparing you, he's adjusting your attitude. Yeah, my dad used to give me attitude adjustments all the time. And when I got through with a session with him, I was the best kid in the town. The Lord is constantly working on the inside of us because we have a purpose. Our purpose is to glorify the body of Christ because what we say and what we do here, once we leave this building, then our objective is to let our light shine. So we're constantly planting seeds whether we're aware of it or not because people are watching us what we say and what we do. Amen. I'm done. He said, Miss Dad, he was disobedient. I told him it would take a long time. <laughs> so we're going to have a session after this. But listen, <clears throat> listen. Genesis is the most important book in the Bible. And the reason why I say that, God sets the ground for our lives. He created the earth, and it was dark. And then he said, let there be light. And there was light. And he seen that it was good. After he created the earth, and then he said, let there be water. Then he said, let the vault split it. The vault was the heavens, the clouds. So when he did that, then he came and he started decorating this, what his creation that he created. He started decorating the seeds that he planted when he said, when he said, let there be light. And then he named the day, he named the light the day and the, and the darkness the night. See, when he did all that, that was his seeds being planted during that time. So he set the foundation for us, and then he came up with the laws of Genesis to tell us what we need to do. Listen, all through the Bible, what it says, plant the, plant the word, plant the seed. 
He said that in the beginning. But he goes on throughout. He goes on throughout the Bible, and he's still saying the same thing. Listen, once a law, it's always a law. If God says it, his word never come back void. So when we plant seeds, we plant those seeds, and, 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 and it may take a long time for that seed to start sprouting. And what we do, what I think what all of, has, all of us has did in, in, in the past, when that seed don't start sprouting, we get weary. And then we want to walk away from it. But some seeds take a little longer to grow than others do. So the thing is about when you plant the seed, you got to have faith that that seed is going to grow. We teach here, we walk by faith and not by sight. If we believe in God, we must also believe in Jesus. If he says it, it's going to happen. Pastor Caradine, when he came here, I wasn't even over, over here at the time, but we was in the church. King Solomon had one service, 11 o'clock service. Pastor Caradine wasn't over here long before I heard King Solomon got at 8 o'clock. He came over here and he started spreading good seed. And that seed has grown and grown and grown over the years. And we're over here now. You know, it's not about a big building, a natural building. But what he has did for King Solomon, he has grown the spiritual building. So keep spreading the word. You may get disencouraged. But just know, if God said it, it's going to happen. He started from the beginning of the word all the way to Revelations. So he started preparing us in Genesis for the end time. So continue to spread good seed to yourself. When you spread good seed to yourself, you're going to spread good seed. Amen. We early. But that's all right. We have put out what the word said put out. Amen. So we're going to get ready to uh, close out. And my encouragement to you is to love God as he loved you. To love people as you would have people to love you. That's spreading good seed. Remember, you reap what you sow. Amen. Let us pray. Let us stand. Father in heaven, we want to say thank you for your word. Thank you for your seed. Lord God, continue to allow your seed to grow within us. And as it grows into us, Lord God, let us spread the word. We are one body with many members. Continue to lead and guide us. Your word says, trust in him. When we're going through some things, just remember what the word said in James. We go through diamond temptation, count it all joy. Because God's word, we know that your word will be grown. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, thank you. And as we leave this place, Lord God, let us go without any hurt, harm, or danger. In the mighty name of Jesus, we say we love you and we praise you. All over the building, say amen. amen. We walk. By faith.